All right, and we're back. Uh, we're doing Comp 228. Let's just go over the PowerPoint slides to make sure that we've got everything uh, kind of all good. We have, we've covered most of everything that I wanted to cover today, but I wanted to go over some of this. Actually, build a tip calculator. <laughs> Let's talk about that. And I'll put the slides up later on. So um, we're looking at, God, lesson, actually back from lesson nine. Um, we covered some of this already. So I want to make sure that I've got everything. So Swing Builder, we got to the point where we get, got to the demo, which is here, demo time. And then I want to come back and talk about some of this. <coughs> okay, so we're going to build a tip calculator app as quickly as we can in the next 20 minutes. Let's see how we go. Um, this tip calculator app, by the way, in Deedle and Deedle Books, is built in Android, also in iOS, and they've built it across different systems. So if you know how to build it on one, you know how to build it in the others. And it's kind of a neat thing to do, right? Um, so let's take a look at this thing um, in terms of components. This is what you're going to see. You're going to have a bunch of different components here. So you're going to have a uh, one part of the tip calculator is going to look like this, the initial GUI with the amount, some kind of slider, the tip, the total, and a calculate button. That's all it's going to be. So B, after the user enters the amount, so let's say for example 34.56, and you can slide the percent of the of the uh, calculator, he can get the tip amount, which is 15%. So a tip calculator, right? Very easy. And then the total will be 39.74. Take the amount, total, the total, add it to the tip, and then to create your total. That's what it does. That's what the tip calculator does. Very simple. Okay, and part of this lesson, um, after user moves the slider's thumb to change the tip percentage, so I change it back to here, it can modify, it modifies these, the tip and the total. And when you click calculate, it'll do that, right? Okay, cool. So that's what it, that's what we're, um, what they build in the book. They use the same principles we just talked about here. This is the good thing, right? Oh, of course I didn't style this page. Why not? You know, and of course it's not. I don't know why, how I missed that one. That's that's just weird. Anyways, but so what we want to do is they each cell in a grid pane can be empty or can hold one or more JavaFX components nodes, include uh, including layout containers that arrange other controls. So for example, other nodes, other containers, all that kind of stuff, right? The app here it uses a grid pane and to arrange views into two columns and five rows. So here's two columns, column one and column two, and five rows, right? And it says, to learn more about class grid pane, visit the Java FX layout grid pane HTML and so on. Um, so we're gonna have text fields, sliders, buttons, and we're also gonna use this uh, class called number format, which is a Java uh, text class that can format, lo uh, format uh, locale-specific currency and percentage string. So like, for example, and they do this with every app they build, Deedle and Deedle, right? So if you use the Android app and if you move to, if you go to Greece, they'll have, you know, euros, right? As opposed to dollars or whatever it's going to be, right? So, and it's a good, it's kind of a best practice, if you will. Um, GUIs are event-driven and we've talked about how to drive events by using the controller piece, right? So again, three pieces, the FXML files that keep track of our controls, where they, how they lay out, um, which is our layout basically. Then there's the, um, you have your CSS, the format, how it looks nice. And then of course you have uh, the last piece, which is your control, which is how, how the controls uh, work together. Again, this, it uses this whole idea of this model view controller pattern, design pattern that we just talked about, right? To split out the view and the apps, um, uh, processing logic, the controller. We haven't talked about the model. The models when we kind of hit. We're going to do that next week when we talk JDBC. All right. So how we create a model with our uh, our JavaScript, our Java, and um, we talked about this in the. So we use the um, event handlers in the controller class. I'm just going to make sure that we uh, we've hit everything. Now they use the, um, remember I kind of do this, this idea of FX ID creates the property for the ID so we can target that particular control. If I put an FX ID, just like I did here on my app, the one we were building. So if I go back to um, the FXML piece, this FX colon ID creates the ID or the variable name 
for that particular control. That's what it does, right? FX ID. The other one is um, the one I also use style class creates a new class called message, the message class. On HTML, this would be equivalent to putting the class attribute inside of your line. Okay? So instead of style class, it would just be called class in HTML. Right? But here we're using style class. So we can use the CSS, application.css, to target it. Okay? So same, the, same ideas that we've been talking about. Um, by default, the grid pane contains two columns and three rows. That's the default. You can add a row above or below an existing row by right-clicking a row and selecting grid pane, add row above or grid pane, add row below. Now, this only happens in the scene builder, and it only happens um, if you want to use the scene builder to create your stuff. We've been trying to do a combination of two things. And again, if I go back to my scene builder view, and if I kill this for a second, right, and I go back into my Eclipse and I right click on my um, on the the file that I want to that I want to access. So which is you know example um, this tip calculator fxml. If I go to open with scene builder, you'll see how my um, my view has been updated, right? Okay, so here's my enter a message. But notice how also one thing to the note is it's inaccurate, right? Enter a message is massive. It's like forty pixels, but here it's showing it like here. So that's wrong, right? That's why I'm not a big fan, and I never have been, of drag and drop UI stuff. Unless I'll have to be honest with you, you look at Visual Studio. Visual Studio, what you see is what you get, pretty much, right? Uh, within reason. Um, and I like building my UI, especially when it comes to Java and JavaScript, especially, and all those kind of things by um, by designing it and then um, kind of uh, you know delivering it that way. Okay, so I've closed that off. So that's the next piece. So you could add um, elements by, um, by dragging and dropping. We've been adding them in here physically in the FXML file, which is more control for us. Uh, same thing with Android. If you drag and drop stuff in Android, Android Studio, Android for Eclipse, you'll get some weird ass errors sometimes, right? It doesn't do stuff the way you think it's gonna do it. Okay. So that's what it's doing here. It's kind of div dividing how many um, columns uh, you can add. So you can say grid pane, add row above, or grid pane, add row below, and you can actually add uh, uh, stuff in there by, um, like it says, um, by right-clicking on a row and then selecting grid pane. Okay, so let's try that out. So I'm going to go back to Scene Builder, and I'm going to kind of right-click here and open my open with Scene Builder. And let's see, even though if this, this is incorrect, I want to add a row above. So I'm going to right-click here, and let's see, grid pane, and then I'll say... Um, I don't have the ability to do that, right? Let's see if I can do that again. So here, grid pane. Grid pane. Add row above or below here. Right? I can only do that, right? But if I do that, if I do above or below, so I go uh, grid pane here, Add row above, I can do that. It, it splits it off like this. And if I go grid pane, add row below, it adds it the same place, right? Because in the grid pane, huh? You get the first row selected. Yeah, so if I go here or here, so I'll only undo. And that's good. So I want to add another one below here. Add row below. There we go. So that's how that works, right? Again, our message, our message, even though it spans, like it, it notice if I click on my, my enter a message, my message says um, if it spans or not, right? So if I go back to properties of this text message, it should tell me that it's, it's, if it's spanned or not. And unfortunately for this one, if I go back to code, it does not. By the way, look, here's my FX ID. It's right here in the code part. It shows my message text as my FX ID, right? If I click on the button, it shows me my click me button hand uh, button handler is the one that I've defined in my in my controller, right? And how have I linked my controller file? How do I link my controller file to my FXML, right? I gotta say that I gotta do that somewhere. So I'm gonna go back to here for a second and let's take a look. On the top of my FXML file, I also have this area that says. FX controller is 
my namespace, tip calculator, and my, the name of my file, which is tip calculator controller. So that's the way I link or bind my controller to my view, right, to my FXML file. Okay. Now again, I'm styling it like this. Here's my, here's my application. This isn't going to change where I say my, my font family is consolas, um, as an example, and my style for my, um, for my, my text itself, right? So I'm saying I'm, I'm targeting that one text, message text. I'm targeting with 60, 60 pixels. It's not showing it um, physically in my, um, on my UI. But it doesn't mean that I can't modify everything else. Now, when I modify stuff, like I showed you guys earlier, so let's say I want this design, and it's showing a, a two column by five rows. So one, two, three, four, five rows, exactly what they're asking for in uh, tip calculator. Right, I can do that. When I do this, and if I save, if I go file save, it saves my changes back. And sometimes, like I mentioned before, <laughs> it's not what I want. It does this now, right? And I add a bunch of other stuff here. Take a look at this. This I need to keep now. I have something called column constraints here, spaces for it, and I also have row constraints here. And notice how I have a min height and pre pre uh, uh, prefix height here for my first row. This is my, my zeroth row. And the same thing goes for my row constraints for my, my the bottom of my row. I have a, um, a predefined height or minimum height of... 30 for both uh, for both those things, and the min height of 10. So some constraints that I built in, and if you notice back to my, um, if I go back to here, and if I look at my grid pane by clicking on the left here, um, I could certainly size these by hand and make things a little better. Like for example, if I want more uh, V gap or whatever, I can certainly do that by clicking my v, my uh, my grid pane, going back to properties, right? And taking a look at some of the stuff that we've got down here, right? Let's take a look at some of the other stuff in my advanced um, uh, layout. Here's my layout bounds. Um, my bounds in local, bounds in parent. Okay, as an example, my layout bounds are right here. And I can choose um, maximums and minimums by um, choosing one of these uh, options in the grid. My size, 238 by height, 131. As an example, that's my grid right now. And it's a four by five layout. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two. But I have more than two, two columns here. Remember that my enter message actually spans, right? It spans uh, multiple rows, multiple columns, right? Enter a message. And if I was to show you that, and if I go grid pane, increase row span, or decrease column span or increase column span. I can do that. So if I want I want it to go another column, I could do that too. Okay. PowerPoint. So um, that's one thing we can do. We build the uh, app's UI, right? We can add the label by dragging the label from the library to the controls, and we can we can do the same thing with the text fields and the slider. And then you have you want to build the UI first, and then you want to start naming them. Okay, so this is the way they do it. If you build the, calcul the tip calculator, they do tip percent uh, percentage label. That's what it's going to be called for this particular label. And they've and notice here in the design view for the tip calculator that they've labeled everything that they want you to, to do to create this uh, this UI, right? So for the for the next few minutes, what I want you guys to do, you've got five minutes or so, right? Um, I'm not going to build in the the the, um, um, the smarts behind it, right? because the smarts happen down here. Right, this is where they actually do the calculations. Notice how in the tip calculator class, you have this at override, right? Um, and inside, this is the main, uh, the main class, right? The, that extends application, right? And that you load your tip calculator FXML file and you do some other stuff like, for example, the, you can set the title of the, of the window to stage.setTitle to tip calculator. Let's do that really quickly before we, we I leave control to you. So I'm going to go back to main, and notice how I have primary stage because we've we've generated this this thing with our scene builder from scratch, right? So um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say um, primary stage. Here's in my this is in my main .java by the way. Primary stage dot, and I want to set title 
uh, for my, my window. This is the title bar of my window to tip calculator. That's one thing we didn't do. We haven't done a tip calculator. We just kind of created our grid for now, right? And if I run this thing the way it is, I get this, right? So here's my tip calculator message. I still have this functionality where whatever I type changes, and that's good. That's good uh, interactivity right now that you can play off of. Okay, so that's what this thing does. And I'm not going to touch that for a second. Then, let's make this a little smaller. Um, again, we attach to the scene. We talked about how that works, the, the UI and the tip calculator class. And the set scene places the scene into the stage. That's what it does because the stage is almost like your application. And your scene is the, is the screen that we're looking at right now. And you can have multiple screens by attaching more than one scene to an application. Okay. And this is what it looks like uh, when, it, when it comes to the uh, tip calculator controller. Here, an example is they use big decimal. We covered that uh, earlier this, uh, this semester. We use math to calculate more accurately uh, uh, accurate numbers with big decimal. Um, they also have some other calculations where they add in things like, uh, now look, notice how it says me, beans value. That's not us, that's not beans. Right? When, it says, when, I, when you say beans value and so on, that's just the, the, the stuff that they're using. But one of the things that we can totally use is things like this. They've created a number format um, where the currency is equal to a number format get currency instance based on um, where you are in the locale. And we use big decimal for the tip percentage because we want to be as accurate as possible. right? And the big decimal is a special class that they use here across the book for calculations. right? But here's where we bind our controls, just like we did last time. So we use uh, at FXML, which is this filter, or um, this decorator is what we want to call it in different languages, right? This at decorator binds our private field to our, our UI, right? And it has to be the exact same name. Please be careful with that. If it's not the exact same name, you're going to get a, um, a disconnect, right? Okay, cool. So once we've done that, um, we do some calculations, and then um, especially here in the, um, you know, uh, private text field, we've talked about that. I want to show you where it is, the next piece. So here's my tip calculator controller class. They do a try catch in this particular case, and all they're doing is their calculations here. So when the, we made this private void, and we made it, they made it, um, uh, we made it public, they made it private in the book, and they also use this at fxml, um, to bind this particular event handler, right, with which is part of action event event to the the the, the calculate button. That's all they're doing here. Remember, it's just like an event handler in JavaScript. If I have an event handler in JavaScript, I say, you know, add event listener, and then I mention what the event handler is going to be. The event listener is going to be the type of event, right? Um, you know, the action event is. Is the, is the action that makes sense for that particular control. So for example, for a button, it's a click event, right? Now there's others too, like a hover event and so on. All the same events we set, we have in other languages are available here as well. And all we're doing here is, this is how it calculates the, uh, the tip by getting the, um, this get text method that we used in our example, in our app, right? It gets the text, converts it to big decimal. That's what it does, right? After it converts it to, to, uh, to big decimal, we have the amount. And then to get the tip, we get the amount, right? And we multiply, we have amount.multiply special uh, big decimal um, method. All of these things are big decimal because they have to be compliant. By tip percentage, so we multiply it by tip percentage, and then we get the total. Total is then equal to um, amount add, we're adding the tip to the total. So it's very accurate, and big decimal is an easy way of using um, calculations for um, banking and, and that kind of um, monetary calculation thing. Here then, after we've got the, the decimal, we tape our, uh, we, you are, we use our tip text field dot set text to set the currency and we, we use a currency format method to format the tip into the proper currency, whether it's dollars or whatever. That's what we're doing. We're using the currency format to wrap the amount that's coming in and we use that, we, we send that to the text field that's in our tip text field, all right? 
And the same thing with the total text field. Total text field, we're going to set text in the right currency format. If there's an error, we're going to say, um, you know, as an example, here's the exception, amount text field, set text, enter the amount. It's going to clear out the text field. It's going to use the select all method if there's any kind of problem. If you've entered in the wrong information, like you entered in, uh, instead of uh, numbers in the text in the tip, you put in some kind of character. It's going to just take you and say enter amount again. It's going gonna, it's gonna to zero that out. And you're going to use the select all method of the text field in order for us to do that. Request focus, what it does is it highlights that text field back again. So it moves the focus back from wherever you had it, the focus being where your cursor or what's highlighted, what's active, the active control. It moves the focus back into that control, which is the text field, to make that the active control. And that's what this little calculator does. It's very, very straightforward. Um, here's the um, initialize method that they use, right? And again, this is, it's called by the FMX loader to initialize the controller, right? <clears throat> and here what's happening is this public void initialize method is part of the um, FX, uh, the JavaFX event lifecycle. Okay, that's what it is. Each of these applications has something called an event lifecycle. And there's different um, built-in events like this initialize event that's, that triggers, right? And for example, this one, current currency.sent round mode, um, we're going to round up, half up, right? As opposed to half down. That's a currency method that we're using. And now our, our tip percentage slider, the value property, we're going to add a listener to it. This is the old way of doing it, by the way. We're going to be adding a listener, and this is a, uh, notice how we're adding in a, um, a listener, that was, which is a new change listener. That's a new type of way of doing it with an anonymous um, listener that's inline. That's what's happening here. Right, so our tip percentage slider, right, what's happening is it's targeting this tip percentage slider dot value property, dot add listener. We're adding a listener to the value property of the tip percentage slider. Whew. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't have written it this way myself. I probably would have used the same methodology in JavaFX to do the, the slider to make the slider work, right? But it uses the at override to say that when the value is changed, then what we want to do is we want to change the value uh, for the tip percentage depending on how how much we slide our slider around, right? And we use something called an observable value, right? <laughs> Where we ex which uh, is a uh, generic class that extends number. Now this is something we haven't covered before, right? Yeah, because remember this is chapter twenty four in the book, so this is kind of going ahead. Let's talk about Java effects. But that's it in a nutshell. The, the first, you create your UI, and then what we do is we control our UI with our controller class. Okay, so very, very simple. So from now on, uh, you know, be aware, we're going to get a, the next, uh, next day, we're going to talk about a, some kind of uh, next assignment for you guys when you come back, right, from when I see you next week. And it'll be after we do, I'm not going to give you an assignment before we do our, our, our little tests. So remember, the stuff we're going to be talking about is the stuff in this PowerPoint as well as other PowerPoints after we did our midterm, okay? So what do we cover just to, before we leave for the day? And I'll update this PowerPoint on, uh, up online for us. If I look at our, our lesson plan so far, our midterm, we did cover a little bit of swing before the midterm, but I didn't cover swing on the midterm, right? So you might have a little bit of swing, right? Then we're into Java effects uh, for the next couple weeks. So we just kind of did, last week we kind of did an intro. This week we did kind of more. But between the UI stuff, that's going to probably be covered. Things around Swing and the difference between Swing and Java effects, those kind of things are going to be covered on, on this uh, next little quiz. Okay? So read chapters that are related to Swing and Java effects. And if you look at the outline for a second, let's take a look at that. We're, again, we're like about uh, a week behind, but we're going to totally catch up. I've taken my time with some, uh, some a aspects of things and rushed others. Um, if you look at some of this stuff here, then um, our JavaFX basics happens in Chapter 25. All right? That's when it happens, the JavaFX basics. Right? So I was wrong. Java is, is 25. And then the UI stuff right layout managers and all that stuff happens in chapter 12 
So we're not going to be covering anything in chapter 10, 9. It's only chapter 12 and chapter 25 that we're going to be covering for next day. Okay, so those two chapters, a little minor little chapter test because it's big stuff. Like we've covered, like UI is like really involved and there's a lot of stuff we can cover within the UI. So please, um, it's a good chance for you to look at the work again and please study before we get together next day. Okay, again, it won't be on, remember, it'll be on the day of, so the day we get together next week, Tuesday morning, that's when your test is going to be. It's not going to be this at this time frame. Okay, any questions before you all take off? No? You're good? See you later? Thank you.